All right, folks. All this setting up this Tormach and everything has got me tired. I think I know what I need. I need a vacation. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That's better. Cannonball! In Montana, they got burgers with macaroni and cheese on them. <laughs> well, that was fun. Woo! I'm back. That was nice. All right, I'm all nice and refreshed. Let's get back to work. So it's going to be a little bit different video this week. So my garage is a mess. I know I promised you that this Tormach would be up and running and I have just not been able to get to it. I've been working on just getting my garage um, I don't know, cleared out because at this point moving all this new equipment in has really put the, the cramp on all my space. So right now this is about what my garage looks like. I at least managed to fit my, my toy car over here. There you go, so it, it fit in the garage. I managed to put the, the um, mini mill over in the side area here, and then the Tormach, of course, is right here. And then over here, I'm gonna tell you a little story about all this metal here. So this old pile of metal here doesn't really look like much, but it's actually a pretty big part of the rifle machining history. So I kinda of wanna give you a feel for who I am, and I'll get back to what this is as we go through this video. So I have my bachelor's in mechanical engineering and while I was going to school I had the idea that I wanted to build a car. So that's kind of been my lifelong dream and that's what I've been working on and that's kind of one of the, well it is the driving force behind even having rival machining. Before I get too far ahead of myself though, also in college I had an idea for a product but it required a little bit of machining. So at that point in time that's when I bought my manual Sieg X2. So I bought my X2, um, kind of abandoned the little project that I had going on at school, but the dream to build a car was still there. Um, started drawing up my car in, man, at the time it was SolidWorks. And by the, by the time I had graduated, I was already kind of starting to piece together parts. That's one of the reasons why my garage is a mess. I've got car parts and everything everywhere. The design is for, uh, it's motorcycle engine driven, so chain driven. So I needed a sprocket made. I found a website that sells just a sprocket, the teeth on the outside and a hole in the center, but all the inside is, is solid steel. So I bought one of those, took it to a machine shop. They quoted me like 80 bucks to cut it out. So I thought about it, I thought that's a pretty good deal, and then I realized, well, I'm probably gonna make a mistake on the first one, or, you know, design revisions. I'm gonna end up needing more of these. And I'm probably gonna need to make more parts than just a sprocket. So that's when I decided to make what you're looking at, this pile of metal. It was my first CNC do-it-yourself project. So I had my little Sieg mill sitting in my garage, but I hated how small the Y-axis travel was. At only like three and a half inches, it was pretty much worthless. I couldn't build anything that I needed. So I thought I could use that spindle and build my own frame to mount it to and get the travel I need. The problem was, as you can see, my stuff was not even close to rigid. It's like 1% of how rigid it needs to be. I built this whole thing. I spent like, I don't know, six or eight months um, designing and building this thing. Spent a good chunk of money and materials only to find out that, you know, well, I should tell you, I was able to machine like aluminum with it, but it just was super duper slow, super light passes, all that kind of stuff. Like it was not even feasible, not even worth running, no accuracy, you know, none of the stuff that you look for in a mill. And I got to a point where I was just bolting on metal or welding metal onto it just to try and add rigidity. Um, and it was just kind of, it got to a point where I figured I was just throwing good money after bad. So about that time, I ended up moving from Florida to Utah and kind of gave me a, a chance to think about it a little bit. And I thought, I've already got the Sieg X2 sitting on the shelf. 
a CNC kit's like 700 bucks for all the ball screws and mechanical stuff. With this, I had already bought the motors and the motor drivers and all that kind of stuff. So I figured, you know, for 700 bucks, I'd have something that I know is gonna work. It's gonna be small, I'm not gonna be able to make car parts, but at least I can make stuff for people and, and use it that way and build small stuff. So that is kind of how Rival was born. Um, the Sieg blossomed into the Tormach that's not quite running yet. But um, that's kind of my backstory. I thought that might be interesting to share with you guys. I do want to talk more about this machine, um, the good and the bad, um, as well as kind of what I learned about myself in the process. So overall, I think this machine cost me, uh, I don't know, maybe a thousand bucks. I'd have to go back and look, but I kind of don't want to. Maybe it was more for all the materials and everything. But the bigger thing was the amount of time I spent on it. Because at making even, even call it 20 bucks an hour, three, four hours a night in the garage, four nights a week, you know, you're talking thousands of dollars in labor that if I would have just gone out and bought a machine, like I probably spent half of the Tormox budget just on my labor to build this machine. Um, at this point, you know, the Sieg is already... Um, kind of taking the back burner. The Tormach is here. Uh, it's more capable than anything like this will ever be. And at this point, I've got a lot of stuff in my garage I need to make room. So it is getting turned into scrap metal, so that's pretty sad. But there is a lot of good stuff that I feel like came out of this. Um, I learned a lot about myself. For starters, I learned that I need to not get so focused in on one way to approach a problem because looking at how much this cost me and how much time, I. If I would have run the numbers, I probably would have been a lot closer to even buying an old bridge port and CNC in that. Um, I'd have been much, much better off, probably for about the same price. Or just jumping right into a Tormach where it's like, yeah, it costs more money, but I'd have been up and running within a few weeks instead of, you know, six or eight months and then it still didn't even work in the end. You know, it, it was definitely a failure of a project, um, you know, by the criteria that the thing doesn't work. But at the same time, I learned a lot about how I want to run my business where it, the first answer isn't always the right answer. And sometimes you got to watch these rabbit holes that you go down into. So this was definitely a gigantic rabbit hole. You know, it, I, I look back and go, man, I shouldn't have done that. But at the same time, I feel like I really learned something from it. And another good thing is that it took me through learning CNC from the ground up, which was pretty cool. Uh, I spent countless nights sitting on my computer researching different software, something that could take something, a CAD file turned into CAM and spit out some G code that this would recognize, different um, CNC machine controllers, all that kind of stuff. So I was really learning from scratch and it was really fun. And I think that that's going to help me and it has helped me with the Sieg and with, with the Tormach. I think it will continue to help me when it comes to troubleshooting machines. I thought I would just kind of share some of this stuff. I've got a ton more metal. It's all kind of looks the same, but um, yeah, this thing's a mess. It's kind of a, it's kind of embarrassing, but I thought I'd kind of just lay it out there, kind of give you guys a feel of where Rival Machining came from. I just put out two videos with my Tormach, getting that thing set up. And now to me, that is like a huge, I hate to say it's an accomplishment because purchasing something isn't an accomplishment, but feeling comfortable enough in my business to be able to buy that and not worry that, you know, it's going to sit here. I'm not going to be able to get business for it. All those types of things. Like I am confident that that thing will make me money. And so to do all those videos and, and put that out. And to me, that's an accomplishment in my business to, to feel comfortable enough to buy that. And now to be able to just tear this thing apart and turn into scrap metal that the Tormach will probably be eating on future orders. I feel like it's just like a total shift, turning the page, a new chapter, whatever you want to call it, and a little hint for the future. Um, that car is still in the works, so stay tuned.